What's going on, everybody? It's Cool Fury. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, 100 with Cool Fury, man. So, just want to say real quick, man, I appreciate all the subscribers coming in. Um, this is a small channel. You know, I, I've said this a lot. It's a small channel, but I appreciate every subscriber I get, every comment, good or bad. I appreciate all the likes, everything, man. Um, that really means a lot, and... I don't know, when I started the channel, I just wanted to see what would happen, and I like making videos, and it's starting to grow now, and I appreciate it. So I just wanted to go ahead and say that uh, first and foremost. Um, a couple of weeks ago, somebody in the comment section suggested that I make a video about you know risk, risks that I took to get to where I am today, things like that. And... Honestly, by no means am I rich, you know. I do well for myself. My wife and I, we do well. Um, we, live a, we live a good life. And, you know, uh, I'm just thankful to the Most High for that. Um, we, we do live a good life. And what counts is that we're able to give our kids a good life. So I... I I'm really thankful for that, but by no means am I, am I rich, by no means um, are we rich, you know what I mean? But we do, we do well, but the answer like to how we got to where we are, how I got to where I am, it's real simple. It's real simple, man. Um, just to start it off, Got to take it back to 2015. And at the time, I was I was in healthcare like I am now, but I was doing a different job back then. I was sterilizing surgical instruments. That's what I was doing. Um, it's a hard job sometimes, and there's not like a ton of money in it. Although, excuse me, there's plenty of people that make decent money in it, but it's not like a ton of money. And um, it's one of those jobs where you just got to grind it out, man. There's good days, there's bad days, but, you know, it's a, it's a grind overall. And honestly, for somebody that's younger in the job, you know, coming in like I did, like, it's not something you want to do you know, for the rest of your life. Like some of the best advice I ever got, you know, about that was um, somebody I came across when I had my first job sterilizing surgical instruments. He told me, man, don't do this for 10 or 12 years. Don't let 10 or 12 years pass by and you're still doing the same job in the same spot. And I took that to heart, man, because after a while I started to move around um, and, and try to look for better opportunities. But anyway, this story I'm about to tell right now is kind of like a part of that and probably the biggest part of it. So 2015, right? I'm sterilizing surgical instruments and, you know, I make just okay money. You know what I mean? I got a car that I finance had a Mitsubishi Eclipse 2009. It was black. That was the first car I ever uh, financed. Cool little car. I like that car. Very reliable. And, you know, so I had that car. My sister had just bought a new house. And she's the type of person that just, she didn't want to be in the house alone. She didn't want to be, it was like a four bedroom house. She still lives there now. And she didn't want to be in there alone. So she's like, you know, you, you can move in with me or whatever. So I did. And I paid her rent. You know, I just I just didn't go in leeching off of her. Um, I paid her rent. And um, I would help clean the house up and stuff like that. So that's what I was doing. Sterilizing surgical instruments. I was renting a room for my sister at the time. Had my little Mitsubishi Eclipse. But I was just, I wanted more. And the girlfriend I had at the time, who's now my wife, we talked about it and, 
you know, in the field that I was in, travel was a big thing. And that's where a lot of people made decent money by traveling, going from state to state, city to city, you know, doing these like 13 week assignments, whatever. And we kind of, we did some research on it. We looked into it. My wife is also in the medical field. She does something different um, from what I do now. And she was doing something different um, than I was doing then. But she would she was still able to travel as well like she could be doing her thing i could be doing mine and we talked about it and we were like yeah we should do that and then at some point just i feel like fear crept in and we just we didn't do it we didn't take any action on it we were just like you know eh, i don't know maybe later and so a whole another year goes by. I'm still working, still trying to figure out what that thing is I need to be doing to advance myself, go further, get more money, whatever. And I ended up looking at a house because I, I was interested in buying a house. And the, the same realtor that sold my sister her house, I, uh, I texted him and we talked or whatever back and forth, I wanted him to let me in this house that I saw around my area. Cause I, I was kind of like interested or whatever. So he did, he showed it to me and he told me that, you know, if you're serious, you know, we're gonna need uh, an approval letter, you know, all that stuff. Basically you gotta have your financing together before a realtor really takes you seriously uh, when it, in terms of buying a home. So anyway, he told me that, so I'm like, okay. So I go online with the credit union that I'm with and I do the application. I get rejected. Um, the reason I got rejected wasn't because of credit. Credit was fine. Credit was cool, straight, solid. Didn't have money, you know. At that time, I probably had like 1500 to two grand, you know, to my name. That's all I had. And that wasn't enough for down payment and closing costs for a home. You know, I heard stories about people buying houses and with barely any money, but apparently barely any money to them was a lot more than what I had. You know what I mean? So I couldn't get it. And, you know, as the saying goes, you know, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, something had to give. So the whole travel thing came back up. And I went and talked to my girlfriend, you know, now my wife. I went to talk to her about it. And she wanted to do it. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just, let's just make it happen. We can do it together. Um, wherever we go, we can split, uh, the hotel costs or whatever it is we can make it happen. Start banking some money, start saving or whatever. And that's eventually, you know, what happened. Her family was against it. Most of them, um, my mom, my sister were against it. My dad, his attitude, he, he's a man. So he understood. He, I think he was like, proud and like happy you know in a very subtle way kind of like yeah he's getting it he understands that sometimes you just got to step out there as a man and make stuff happen so he was like the the way he looked at me like from that point moving forward even to this day it, it was different from that point moving forward like it's like a, a unspoken respect you know so that, that, that felt good, but my mom and my sister were totally against it. Like I said, um, my wife's family, they were mostly against it. And, you know, they were all like, well, what if the job doesn't work out? Or, you know, what if you guys start having problems in your relationship? You know, what if this, what if that? And then when we told them that we landed 
a work assignment in the same facility and that we put in our, uh, each of us put in a two weeks notice at our current positions. I mean, it just got worse. Like, what are you doing? Is this a good decision? Why are you doing this? And um, to make a long story short, man, um, we talked about it, but we decided to do it. We, we landed an assignment. Um, we put in two weeks uh, notice at our jobs and that was that. We talked about whose car would be better. My car had lower mileage. I felt like it was a little bit more solid. So I said, you know what? It's the smaller car because she had a Honda Accord. Four door, you know, with a bigger trunk. I had a Mitsubishi Eclipse hatchback. It was a 2009. But I felt like my car would, would hold up, you know, good going across country because that's where the assignment was. Our first assignment was um, in Oregon. It was a suburb of Portland. So that's that's where it was. Like we moved all the way from Georgia, from the Southeast, all the way to the Pacific Northwest. Like we literally drove across country in that little Mitsubishi. And it was the best decision of my life because from that point forward, man, like, Traveling, doing um, sterilization for instruments, I was making double what I was making back here, you know, doing the travel assignments. And going across country, man, like, I've been on long road trips before, but I've never, like, driven across the country before. That was something totally new and... You know, sometimes when you jump out there and do something, it's like you're not afraid of anything anymore. And that was kind of that moment for me as far as, you know, just trying things in life and, and just saying, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. I don't care. And, you know, we did that. And it lasted about a, it lasted like a year. Um, we wanted to come home, we wanted to get married, stuff like that. Uh, get a house and things. Um, we had travel assignments, you know, out there in Oregon. Um, we came back over this way. We went to South Carolina. We had uh, DC, uh, DC area assignments. I had an assignment in Maryland, my last assignment, and banked all this money and stuff like that. Came back um, and ended up buying brand new townhouse in 2018 and the realtor the same realtor that I was talking about earlier that showed me the house the same one that um sold my sister her home um so when I got rejected on that um approval from my credit union I texted him and I told him you know the situation and I said you know what when I'm ready I promise you I'm going to come back to you and you're going to sell me a house. And that's exactly what happened. Came back to him like, hey, this is what's been going on all this time since you heard from me last. We're ready. And um, bought a house and like the bought a townhouse and the rest is history. I ended up selling that townhouse last November. And um, we bought this house that we're in and now more space, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, just further progress. And that was the biggest risk I took. You know, a lot could have gone wrong. Something could have gone wrong with the job. Something could have gone wrong with the relationship I had. It just, a lot of stuff could have gone haywire. But you know what? It didn't. We worked it out. And it was a come up, you know? So sometimes when you think, like, what is it that I can do? to advance myself or help myself move forward. Like you can have your brain going a hundred miles per hour trying to figure that out. But sometimes like you might already have an answer. Like I already knew the answer. I just wasn't acting on it for like a whole year. I knew what I could go out there and do, but I was just, I let fear and the unknown affect me. And, but once I got um, 
rejected on that um, home application, that was it for me. I just I knew I had to jump out there, and it's it's been up ever since then. So that's the biggest risk I ever took, man. Um, this video was like super long at this point. I apologize for that, but I just wanted to talk about that and let you know that you know sometimes you might already had the answer. You know, you just gotta take action on it and make it happen. And your life will be better. You'll thank yourself for it. You know, it, it, it's all worth it. It's all experience and life is a life is like a, a school. You know, you, you either you're gonna learn something or you're not. So you may as well learn as much as you can so you can go as far as you could possibly go. So with that said, man, that's gonna be the end of this video. Um Check out the other videos on the channel. I got, you know, the jewelry videos. Um, check out my other channel where I drop music. Um, I usually try to put a clip at the end of every video I do. And, you know, that's me. That's my music or whatever. So check that out. Like, comment, subscribe over there. Like, comment, subscribe right here on this channel if you're not subscribed. And um, with that said, man, that's going to be the end of this video. I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out. Peace. Make no mistake about where I'm from. Hey, look, I'm from the mitten, sipping furnace in the kitchen. Bring a coat, bring a hat, just in case you want to visit. Bring a bat, bring a gap, just in case you're feeling skittish. In a place called Flint, it's best not to be the witness. We live how we live, never looking for forgiveness. Pop said, go to work, that'll keep you out of prison. So I stay about the streets and try to focus on the business. Cause the kids who never listen, bodies get dumped in the ditches. A single slick remark can make the killer star tripping. Trade a couple mugs, trick a finger. Star itching, trunk skip popped in the bullet star whizzing past your head to kill a kid. That's collateral for missing. A child in the box is not an unfamiliar vision. She dies with a bullet, shooter lives with his decision. Sad way to prove the streets know of no religion. It's evil on the mission.